right, so the premise of this talk is working with enterprises and trying to do much larger deals than we're used to, than many of us are used to doing with WordPress. Really working with large entities, which we'll get more into. Introduce myself before we dive too much into the talk. Um, so I'm the owner of a company called TenUp. We're a distributed WordPress company with employees from all across the country. We have 13 full-time employees. We're always recruiting, always growing, always looking for exciting opportunities and, uh, and new employees. Wink, wink. Um, we work with what I would consider to be pretty enterprise class clients. Uh, we do work with companies like Juice Couture and Fashion, Time Magazine, Consumer Reports. We do what was at and Interactive until they spun off to YP or YellowPages.com. TechCrunch we work with, we work with colleges like Bates College and the University of Rhode Island. So we work with some pretty large companies. Um, we also work with some small shops or some enterprise organizations that are purely B2B that you've probably never heard of. But we work with a lot of big and I think exciting customers that always keep us challenged and always present interesting challenges that I want to sort of share some of our work and learn. Um, we contribute uh, to WordPress Core as a team. We maintain some really, really well-rated plugins. Um, my personal experience and background, which I think maybe makes me a little bit of an interesting candidate to talk about this. I work with very small businesses. I work with huge businesses. I worked full time prior to getting more into web development, freelancing, working at companies that range from two person mom and shops to companies with 10,000 employees. Um, what that means with an IT shop and with infrastructure and with web. Um, I've worked with small nonprofits. I've worked in the healthcare space briefly. I spent three years working for a large government contractor in the marketing space and in the web technology space. So a pretty diverse range. You have to insert the joke. What is an enterprise? Ha ha ha. So an enterprise for simplification and generalization purposes, I'm just going to call a very large organization or a large business. You can't really give one of these talks without making a lot of generalizations uh, about these organizations or always exceptions to the rules. There are some huge organizations that still manage to behave like small organizations and startups and be very energetic. There's some small organizations that behave like what I would classify as enterprise class organizations. But for generalization purposes, we're talking about large businesses. So probably the more important question for a group of WordPress developers and aspiring WordPress marketers is not what is an enterprise, but what is enterprise class software. So one company that whatever else you want to say about them certainly understands what enterprises need, what enterprises look for is Microsoft. Um, they do make some of the largest and most popular enterprise tools um, for organization. This is a slight synopsis of how they define their developer network when you're working on enterprise class applications, how they define it. And the emphasis here is on enterprise applications are complex, they're scalable, so they can deal with high scale, they're distributed, they're component based, and they're mission critical. Data centric, user friendly, meet stringent requirements for security, administration, and maintenance. So I think the first question to start asking as we walk through this is, when you think about the sites you're building on WordPress and the challenges you deal with, do you think they meet the criteria? So, with that question in mind, here's really the premise of this talk. Um, and it's interesting in different cities that I've given this talk in, the reaction is very different. Um, but I want to start by just asking the question of this audience. When you think of a big deal that you work on with WordPress, what that means to you. If you're a developer or a freelancer or worker at agency and you work on a project greater than $50,000, can you raise your hand? Yeah, the Boston audience is an atypical one. How about larger than $100,000? maybe five hands, some of which are my employees, direct <laughs> employees, um, <laughs> in, this, uh, in this sea of people. Um, so the next question is, why does, and I ask myself this question a lot of clients we work with. On that first list of clients we work with, we have companies that I mentioned like UC Couture that we build great blogs for. But I find myself frequently asking, why does a client like Trulia, why does a client like Juicy Couture, why are they perfectly happy and comfortable running their blog on WordPress, but if you talk to them about the idea that they could run their whole site, they could power their whole site by WordPress, that's a scary idea. Right? Why is that? For the developers in the room, or even the people that have worked with different platforms, when I put this list on the screen, and I say the names Drupal, Expression Engine, Sitecore, and WordPress, I could list a million others. I put those names on the board, and I ask you which one you think of as being about big, really large projects, really complex projects. 
Which one comes to mind? More importantly, which one comes to your mind when you think of this, the platform that's used for the smallest project, the least enterprise of these platforms? If you think it's WordPress, raise your hand. What do people think of as being the biggest? And does anybody think WordPress is the biggest platform? Anyone want to stand up in the position that WordPress is the biggest platform of this list? All right, no one. So, you know, the, uh, the, pre the premise here is why is this a problem, right? Why, if I, I can guarantee you if I was in a room of Drupal developers, right? Just to use one example, I asked how many of them have worked on projects for $50,000, and very few people wouldn't raise their hands in that room. If I asked them how many have worked on projects for $100,000, probably at least half of them would raise their hands. And yet, we as a community, with a CMS that I, I hope and think everybody knows here is really awesome, right? We're somehow stuck in this position where as a community, we've been relegated to this position of the little CMS, right? Or the cool blog tool, but not the enterprise, not that full solution that's on that Microsoft developer network definition, the reliable, scalable, mission critical. So actually, before I even go to the slide, if you want to offer, and make it a little bit interactive, why, why I mean, do anyone want to take a stab at that question, why is this? Part of it may be uh, a problem with WordPress itself. Not, not the WordPress technology, but the organization, that they really still are promoting themselves as a blogging platform that also does these other things. And, and I don't think the website helps us as developers, as, as consultants, to get our clients off that perception. We may get this as a more input. For the camera, since we're not running the mic around, so perception. Uh, automatic and WordPress.com market their market WordPress as the best blogging tool in the world. And we we talk a lot about blogging, how much you can do with blogging and WordPress. We don't really market or put forward in terms of more powerful CMS or enterprise kind of applications. I don't think WordPress does a very good job of actually showcasing the enterprise side. I mean, it's, it's not like you can just go to WordPress.com. I know they have a showcase, but they don't make that big deal out of it. Like, so the showcase. So it's still marketing. We don't showcase it enough. We don't talk about right, right. enterprise. Case studies. case studies. We're missing case studies, good examples of how it's used. Acceptable. 
an emission critical operation. And that risk failure tolerance isn't just, it's not just about what the technology is capable of, what they expect of vendors, right? It's when, if I'm going to, as an enterprise organization, reach out to you and work with you, can I trust that this organization you have put together is one where something's not going to break? Am I going to, you know, the, the famous enterprise question, right? Am I going to get fired for choosing you? Am I going to get fired for hiring this company? Another big difference with enterprise is edge case requirements, right? And we'll, we'll talk about some of the ways we address these, but when you're talking about very large organizations with lots of people participating in the organization and needing to reach that global scale, there are requirements that WordPress doesn't deal with in its core, right? Because 95%, probably 99% of people that use the software don't care about these features. And these features, more than they don't care, these features would be in the way. Right, it was in WordPress core. WordPress core stays sort of lean, but there are some there are some features that probably 90% of enterprise organizations do need to worry about and be thinking about. It, some of which we'll talk about things like translation when we talk about a global scale. Um, things like needing to deal with maybe 200 users in the organization managing content at a granular level. There are requirements that you have to deal with that are different when you think about enterprise. Budget is different. Um, you know, I, I've, told every, I've told everybody that asks me about enterprise or trying to come to the team with us or work with us on very large deals, I have never, never lost an, a large enterprise deal because we overpriced it. I have lost several enterprise deals because we underpriced it. Right? If you go in thinking you're going to buy, you want to buy a $35,000, $40,000 car, maybe a $70,000 car, right, to a car maker, um, and the guy at the counter starts talking to you about this amazing $10,000 car, right? You're done. You don't care how good that car actually is. It would be the best car ever made. But the perception immediately is, and we're just not on the same wavelength here. We're just not talking about the same scale. Pricing perception. So um, in enterprise, their expectation of budget is that you're going to spend a lot of money on you, and they're going to get all those things we talked about in the previous slides. This is not a small business that wants to pinch every penny. They want to know that if their site goes down, or if they have an immediate need that somebody is there, they paid enough money for somebody there to pick up that phone right then and there and answer their question and help them right away. Institutional challenge. This is where usually everybody in the room starts, starts to grow, right? The politics, you know, of a large enterprise. Um, who you're talking to. You know, you're not always talking to, you're not always talking to the owner of the large enterprise. You're talking to people who are reporting to somebody else and have to justify the decisions that they have to make. Um, we're talking to somebody that's probably asking the question, and again, it's probably asking the question, am I going to get fired if this project doesn't go well? Who am I answering to if this project doesn't go well? You're talking to IT departments and marketing departments that are often afraid of change, right? Or often afraid um, for their jobs as part of a larger organization. And we'll talk more about those. So let's, let's talk about what it means to not just the problem, to talk about some more specific kind of issues that you face and how to address those when you're going in and trying to work with an enterprise organization or trying to sell yourself to a really large company. Um, the first reality is, and we face this one that's sort of still a small company ourselves, enterprises love other enterprises, right? They love the familiarity of talking to other people, wearing the suit, other people that know what it means at multiple offices around the world. Um, the way I, I phrase it here at the bottom is that the WordPress community is often like a bunch of young rebels. Young rebels are fun to date, they're hard to marry. Right? I, when, I look, when I look around this room, and I'll make sure that this is true and look around for a moment longer, but I think I'm the only, I'm maybe the only guy in this room wearing a sports jacket. Um, which is fine, and I love, somebody's going to call me out here, but, um, and, and, and I love our community. Um, and I love that we're casual, but I can guarantee you if I went to like a site for a conference, there would probably be one guy in the room not wearing a jacket. That doesn't mean we have to change our core culture, but it does mean as a community, when we're going in and talking to large organizations, we do need to be thinking about as a community the perception that we are giving off to enterprises, right? If you're an enterprise and you're thinking about different communities and thinking about those developers you've been given referrals to talk to, they're the great, the great WordPress ninjas, the great WordPress developers, how do we come off? We come off like serious enterprises that they can work with and that they get, and that they understand to solve their problems. Or do we come off? Or do we come off like the other rebels that are doing some cool things, but I don't know if I'm ready to sign a 
thousand dollars you with your team. So solutions to this, we've solved these kind of challenges. Have a team. I mean, there's no no addition to that sentence. If you think they're going to go in as a solo developer or just two solo developers into a large organization that wants to spend a lot of money on their project, you're not going to be taken very seriously as a generalization. It doesn't mean you have to build a company, right? You can find other teams to partner with. It doesn't mean that you have to have all of your resources as full-time employees. You can build like little you know, collections of developers. Um, but go in with other people, talk about your group, talk about your team, talk about the people that you work with. Include a project manager in conversations. You're probably, when you're talking to an enterprise about a project or what your responsibilities or your requirements are, you're going to be lucky if you talk to somebody that's technical and is another engineer. They want to talk to somebody that knows or look at a project from their perspective on your team. Somebody whose job is not to complain about how the caching algorithm for transients um, you know, causes something. They don't want, not interested, right? They want to talk to somebody there who's interested, who's focused on pulling off the objective of the site. So always include a project manager when you go after large deals. Again, it doesn't mean you have to go and hire a full-time project manager if you want to sort of be a small organization. Find other agencies that have project managers you can partner with, you can team with. It could mean just having, there are people out there that just like retired developers, retired agency, uh, people that have run agencies that just do like project management for other companies, project management for clients full-time. Always include somebody that's not technical that's a project manager in conversations. And going back, as I said a few times here, partner with established larger agencies, and they don't have to be WordPress agencies. All right, so if you're in Boston and you have this great opportunity for this huge company that wants to spend a lot of money building a project with you, there's lots of great creative agencies in Boston that just do design and branding. There's lots of agencies that do more sort of traditional consulting. Partner with them. You know, you'll benefit from you know having that sort of enterprise level experience your team go in there with. No benefit from getting into the WordPress space and being able to work with you. Don't be afraid to partner. Don't be afraid to reach out to people that are larger than you with good agreements in place and go after those kind of opportunities. Partner with Automatic. So Automatic has, we'll talk about this more, has an excellent uh, enterprise program that we're going to talk a lot about called WordPress.com VIP. Some people know this for the hosting, but they also offer a full enterprise level, very expensive, as it should be, VIP support package. They are there, they want to partner with other developers. And nobody can bring sort of huge scale WordPress, huge scale experience in a company like Automatic can. Reach out to them, bring them into the conversation early if you're a large customer, include them in your solution. Right? From the client's perspective, the enterprise's perspective, you're still bringing them and presenting the solution to them. But they can be part of that solution. Another challenge with WordPress is control and predictability. In some ways, WordPress offers neither, right? Like, there was a uh, there was a Boston-based firm that I was talking to trying to do a very large product a year and a half ago. They ultimately, they ultimately didn't go with WordPress. And their main gripe, which was sort of a legitimate one, is that they can spend $600,000 buying custom CMS from Adobe, and they know for that amount of money that they can pick up the phone and Adobe can tell them what their roadmap looks like in two years. They will answer the phone. They will say, oh, look, we don't like uh, the direction that this project is going or the CMS is going. Can you make some changes? And someone will answer. Someone will talk to them. Um, if there's a roadmap for what WordPress is going to look like in two years and what the features are going to look like in version 4.0, I haven't seen it. Um, there is no predictable roadmap promising this feature will be in WordPress 3.7 or 4.1 or when this feature will get rolled in. And um, I have yet to find a main support hotline for the WordPress software where I can call and ask them to fix you know, a problem with WordPress. It's an open, open source problem, right? There are big support agencies, companies, Companies out there, companies like Automatic that provide support, but there's no central line at all if you don't like the way WordPress is going as a CMS. But there are benefits that we have. So I argue that we, when we talk to enterprises, that we have a better balance. You have total control over theme, uh, themes, plugins, the custom functionality. So you're getting the benefits of leveraging a framework in an application that is probably 70% at least built to what you need it to do. You don't have to build it from the ground up, but you can build on top of that themes that they have 100% control. They own the theme. They own the code. Right? You can build plugins and solutions on top of it that they have total control over in your organization. Emphasize control that the, an API open source gives them over a closed platform. So the flip side to you can call up and, and yell at Adobe, right, is that 
you don't at the end of the day. You know, at the end of the day, what usually what one of these platforms give you is what you get. Because WordPress and open source platforms like WordPress are so open in terms of exposing the API to their, their external functionality, they're not locked into what a commercial vendor or a quote unquote commercial enterprise CMS gives them. They can build around almost anything. You don't have to wait and hope that that roadmap comes true in six months that they've been promised. And the size control over vendor process. So one way to turn around the you know turn around the conversation is your you may think you have control over that vendor, but you're locked into that vendor. If you go with Adobe, you're, you use their proprietary platform and you don't like working with Adobe anymore, start over. Um, with WordPress, you have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of developers out there, shops out there. If you're not happy with the service you're getting, you're welcome to take what we built for you and take it to someone else. So you have control over your vendor process. The other thing that you can do, and we certainly do this, is you become part of the core, become part of the core WordPress team. Commit core code, become part of the core project. It's very powerful as an organization to say, we help influence, we help build WordPress. We help influence the direction that WordPress is going in, and we have influence over what features get added, and what kind of functionality gets in there. So contribute back and use that to your advantage. We talked about this at the beginning, enterprises like case studies. Publishing space for blogs, CNN's political ticker, people like TechCrunch, companies like TechCrunch, where we kill it on the showcase front. Um, elsewhere, we are still weak and we are still growing. We don't have a strong case study to just pull out of our pocket to show how huge governments like X, um, you know, X and Y have been running on WordPress for a while. There are some good case studies uh, out there that a lot of people don't know about. A lot of people know the second one on, I'm sorry, the first one here. A lot of people know the WordPress showcase. Um, there are good examples of CMS and very large organizations if you're not already familiar with that on there. Um, the other one that is less known, but probably even better, is the VIP showcase. Um, I will say that most of them are still publishing centric, but you will find in enormous companies from like the New York Times, uh, you know, the broadband.gov project uh, on the site. And, and to this point, remember, you don't, when you're trying to sell not just yourself, but you're trying to sell WordPress, which is part of the challenge that we face in enterprise, you don't just have to show your own samples. Show them samples of what's possible on WordPress. Not just, what, not just what you've done. The other thing is demonstrate how you were able to use WordPress to solve an innovative problem. It doesn't have to be the same problem, but talk about how, a, how another client, another project came to you. There were no examples of WordPress having done this yet that were out there. It doesn't look like anything like WordPress when you look at it, and here's how you solve that problem. Here's how WordPress as an open and accessible platform let you conquer that. Shocking, right? Enterprises can be political. So, um, the reality is when you're dealing with a large corporation that's not just one owner or a few owners that are just trying to struggle to get by, is that you have large or large components of the company that are not maybe don't fully understand what WordPress is, don't fully understand what you do. IT organizations, marketing organizations that feel threatened. You're gonna come in, I don't really understand an IT guy, WordPress, I don't want to have to learn a new platform. This comes in, you know, it's over for me. You have a marketing person I spent six months being trained on this platform trying to understand how this thing works that we have now. I finally got my head around it. They're going to come in. They're going to break it all over again. I'm not going to be able to do my job. So how do you deal with how do you deal with political organizations? Well, part of the honest answer is you deal with political back. Um, engage and recruit and train teams for advice. So instead of just telling IT, you're doing it all wrong, this is how we're going to come in and do it all right for you, right? which I've seen people do. Um, engage them. Tell them. You know, ask them what are the challenges, what aren't you able to do right now, what do you do well in your organization. If you feel, if you engage them at a level where you need them and you do need them to be involved, they will think that they're in the political mindset of an organization or just sort of the job protection mindset. They're thinking that you need them. They're going to feel a lot more comfortable if you're engaging them and making them feel like they're a value part of that process. Find ways to partner, not replace. Same kind of idea. Find ways to talk to marketing organizations and IT organizations to talk to them about what you need them to do, how you need them in your process. Find ways to work with them, to tell them, you know, to not replace their staff. One thing we do commonly, especially if companies on that budget line and maybe are trying to be a little more aggressive, is talk about how we can train, you know, their employees. Talk about how we can come in there, help them define requirements, and actually sit down with them and help them build the solution internally. We're there to help them. We'll code review for them, we'll help them outline how to solve their problems, partner with them. Demo, demo, and demo. 
Okay, so one of the things that's awesome about WordPress is when you open it up and you show that marketing person, this is how you add a post, this is how you add a page, suddenly that fear of, at least usually, suddenly that fear of my job is going to be made miserable by learning a new platform. If you do it well, it's going to be, oh my god, this is so much easier. Why haven't I been doing this all along? If you demo WordPress and show high-end sites or even simple sites, to show how easy it is to add content, to manage it, then anything, they're probably going to be excited about getting into this platform. Enterprises like planners. A lot of people that work on small projects are accustomed to this mindset that I need to figure everything out and then they're going to pay me to just start coding and start building. That's part because people that you're working with are often, again, usually not engineers. They, large enterprises often don't get this. They don't want you to just get started. They want to pay you to take the planning requirements definition process seriously. Um, when you're talking to a large organization, it is not a hard sell to say, we want to spend the first week or the first month, depending on the size of the project, analyzing your requirements, going through the list that you gave us for seems and complete, and coming up with a full plan for how we're going to actually tackle this problem. Um, don't be afraid to sell not just your programming services, but be able to sell the service of helping them map out the solution. And explain your process in detail. Talk to them about how you project manage. Talk to them about how they can always, uh, how they can always get to their code, or how they can always see what the latest messages are on the project. Show them, show them uh, how you actually get the work done. So infrastructure. Um, one of the things that people graduating from non-enterprise to enterprise have to deal with is Bluehost is not going to deal with a million visitors in month. Um, I hope that's not shocking to anybody. Um, so when you're, one of the biggest challenges is that scaling challenge, right? WordPress can scale, but if if you don't know where to go to scale, you're not an IT guy or an infrastructure guy that understands things like Memcache and Nginx servers, go to people that do. Again, this goes back to the TMA partner, right? You don't have to be the hosting solution and the development solution, you know, and the 24-7 support solution. All of these, all of these companies, Automatic and their VIP program, WP Engine is here today, as you did, they all specialize and are absolutely awesome at the business of how to make your site run really well, run really fast, stay up, be stable, right? Reach out to those organizations because they can also talk about their enterprise experience. VIP can talk about uh, how they run, you know, how they host New York Times blogs, uh, or blogs for the Wall Street Journal, the CNN political ticker. They can go into those conversations with you and be part of your plan talking about this is how we scale to extremely high needs. These organizations are, they want to work with those clients too, right? These guys want enterprise clients. Um, I'm sure that you can't, you guys are in the room, did, sitting right in the front row from Zippy Kid, talk to them about those enterprise deals you're looking at, and bring them into that process, bring them into your team to talk about how they scale and talk about all those buzzwords for infrastructure and really blow those prospective clients away. Back of in disaster recovery. So, part of that plan, part of your proposal for them should deal with what happens when something does go wrong. What happens if something if something does go wrong, there are a lot of solutions out there that are good. Vaultpress is an excellent solution. That's another automatic product that does automated backup and security monitoring for you. Um, backup Buddy is a commercial plugin that offers a lot of really simple, straightforward backup. Um, don't go in with a proposal or plan not talking about what your plans are for an emergency. And talk about the quality of things like Vaultpress, the kind, again, the kind of site that you use it. Version control and code management. So one of the things, again, in talking about your process, one of the things you should always be talking about is how you how you protect what they are basically paying you for, which is for you to build code for them. Right? The asset that they are getting from you, in addition to some strategic work and some potentially some branding work, is the code that you're writing. So talk about how you control your code, how it's always backed up, how you have all versions of that code. If they have engineering and technical teams, you should invite them in to be able to, to be able to get them their code whenever they want it. Um, always make sure that you have a process in place for, for yourself for rolling back and seeing the whole history of code. Um, Beanstalk is an excellent tool we use that provides things like Git and uh, SVN, Mercurial version control solutions. A lot of people are familiar with GitHub. There's a lot of other cropping up every month, it seems. Um, Bitbucket. Um, but always use some sort of version control. You should never be working on an enterprise type application where you're not doing, where you're, not, you're just setting your code up there and not sending it to a repository and always have a staging site. Always be testing it, always roll it out to a staging site, demonstrate how it works, test it before anything ever goes to a live site. So functional requirements. 
um, things that are different uh, in terms of functional needs and um, feature lists that enterprises have to deal with. Um, so as far as custom content requirements go, um, which is to say that we want a calendar feature, or we want for university, we want a, uh, we want a featured students feature. Remember that, um, I like to start by saying, remember that WordPress is the starting point, not the destination, right? The admin screen, the user interface that you have in there, that's how you start. That's your base platform um, that you're going to have to build upon. How you build upon it, and whether it's consistent looking, whether it's sort of a mess that you build upon it, makes a big difference in how enterprises perceive your work. So we've given a lot of talks about things like how to extend and customize the interface, not just rely on off-the-shelf plugins, but how to build things to look consistent to make that experience of managing featured students or a custom kind of calendar uh, or sporting events, uh, making it look consistent, making that elegant as part of their administrative experience, making it easy. Um, another part of that that a lot of people forget about or just leave out because something easy, hidden away, easy to leave out till the end, is the editing and the writing experience. Remember that people using WordPress as publishers are going to be spending most of their time, should be spending most of the time creating content, publishing content. Take the time to refine that experience of where they do. Um, there are there are um, APIs in WordPress and tools in WordPress to really customize what that looks like. There's an editor style sheet that you can make it look like it'll look on the front end. I have a talk. These slides are on our website. Um, I have a talk called Editing the Visual Editor that talks just about that experience of making that editing, that place where the users actually write their content, look consistent, look great. Workflow management is a very common problem when you're dealing with large organizations. It's not one guy sitting in front of a blog and logging in, maybe one contributor that needs to have their posts reviewed before they're published. It's oftentimes teams of people, right? Somebody writes it, it goes in their workflow to somebody else to do a peer edit. After that peer edit, it goes to the content manager that publishes it. There might be content groups that have different responsibilities. There may be more steps after you publish your content. There might be multiple checks. One awesome solution to this, which is, um, again, supported and made by Automatic, is a plugin called Editflow. If you're doing enterprise kind of publishing or enterprise kind of CMSs, you should definitely be aware of Editflow. It gives you um, a variety of tools from user groups to very custom steps in your workflow for the flow from person to person, those people to be notified when they need to publish content. Thinking about the fact that lots of people will be publishing content together with different roles in enterprises is really important. Um, a new tool that I think is really great for enterprises that really show them how powerful WordPress can be is a tool released by um, the New York Times, and again, co-authored with Automatic, called Ice Visual Revisions. Ice Visual Revisions basically gives you Word, like uh, Microsoft Word's track changes, feature built in. You can actually go in, recommend changes, cross things out, make suggested alternative content, um, reject changes, accept changes in the workflow. It gives you that whole peer review process for content right inside WordPress. And that's really powerful when you're talking about large organizations with multiple people contributing to documents and contributing to their content. Multilingual. So I'm going to start by saying that for the entrepreneurs in the room, this is something, this is a <coughs> excuse me. This is a weakness in WordPress. I'm betting John, you're probably going to talk about this a lot in your and why the asterisk star, etc. isn't WordPress a CMS. There are tools out there. Um, one that we find the least evil, depending on the scale of the site, is WPM, uh, I got the letters backwards, but WPML, um, WordPress Multilingual. It's, if you're not dealing with huge scale, it can, be, it can be an okay solution. A lot of times we're working around this. We have just independent sites, kind of workflow hacks for the fact that WordPress doesn't do multilingual well. Um, two solutions, but we've got to tell us as a community right now, one of the things I think holding us back from being able to practically tackle a lot of enterprise use cases is we don't have good multilingual solutions. So from a development skill standpoint, if you want to work on really high scale, really high scale, really big projects. The first is understand WordPress's information architecture. Um, don't just understand how to write a line of PHP code or how to copy and paste from other sites. Nothing wrong with doing that to help you get something done, but if you really want to understand what WordPress can do and what's possible with WordPress, Take the time to fundamentally understand how it works. What are post types? What are taxonomies? What are the relationships between these objects? The core CMS concepts and how WordPress, how WordPress puts them into practice. 
grasp the importance of things like caching an object, caching, and how to use them. So understanding, and again, at a level deeper than WordPress, what makes a site slow, what makes a site fast, is really important. And there's, there's plenty of resources out there. Um, a classic example of this is understanding that the heaviest, one of the heaviest things that a website does um, when it loads, really two things. One is making transactions back and forth to an database. Right, so the first thing that is assigned for me of looking at a developer's code, that they're not really building something for enterprise, is if they're going around the WordPress API and trying to be clever by going directly to the WordPress database. You're not trying to be clever, you're being sloppy. WordPress has built into it, whether you know it or not, all sorts of caching that you can turn on to be even power, more powerful in enterprise, object caching, page caching. Um, you know, and even if you're not at that level, even in a single page mode, making sure you're not making redundant SQL requests or unnecessary requests. Um, it's a sign for me to sort of step back. It's a sign for me that you don't really understand caching. You don't understand what it means when a page loads. The other one that's very heavy when you're actually loading a site are things like remote, um, remote requests, things you're going and talking to external data sources. If I ever see in code, right, when I'm looking at it, somebody's making a curl, like an inline curl request on every single page load to an external site, means, again, you don't know how to build things for high scale. Um, every single time the web page has to go out and rip something from an external source and pulling it back is a heavy transaction. WordPress has APIs, like the WP HTTP class. Some of you will know this as like WP Remote Get, WP Remote Post, or wrappers, the WP HTTP class. Built into those functions and classes, more than just being a cool way to simplify seven lines of curl, built into those, built into that code is caching, where, it's, where it saves results of those requests and you're not making that multiple times. Understand how to do remote requests through the WordPress API. So some quick wrapping up thoughts on the future. So this is, I think, again, I think John Eckman is going to be talking tomorrow. It's probably going to be dive a lot deeper than I'm going to on these points. Multilingual is still a very weak link, but I'm hoping as a community that some of the plugins that are out there, um, some of the plugins I know are evolving out there will get better at solving. It is a big weak point we have for enterprise. Um, Better previewing tools, so better ways for enterprises to make mass change sets to their site. Get four new articles ready, five new pages ready, a new carousel, be able to make a mass set of changes to their site and say, now it's ready, push it up. Not something that we really can do well in WordPress. There are some plugins built to facilitate this. WordPress 3.4 is starting to open that door. They have that. They have the new tools in there. You can make all sorts of design changes to your site, preview them, and then push them up all at once. Um, when it comes to content, we still don't really have great tools to make mass change sets all at once and push them up to production. Better tools for content reuse, so the multi-site problem, um, which probably any developer that's worked with multi-site has encountered. Um, content reuse, I think, is an overused but important concept that, that organizations like to hear. We want to manage five different sites about our product, and a lot of these sites are going to share information, they're going to share news feeds. We want to push news when we publish it out to three different sites that we host. Uh, we want to be able to pull in, um, you know, for a university, we want to be able to pull in profiles into all of our sites in the university. In the university. WordPress multi-site wasn't really, wasn't really built with the idea that those sites were going to share content. They were built to be sandboxes with one WordPress install, you could run sandbox multiple sites. Again, there are, so there are ways around this coding with code, talk to a specific site, if you know the specific use case. There are some, I think, pretty mediocre plugins that attempt to give you like a global feed of posting content, but content sharing, content reuse, publishing between multiple sites, something I think we need to get better at. Standard compliance. So one of the most horrible things every developer has to deal with, what we have to deal with, is things like W3C accessibility requirements, government accessibility requirements, things um, requirements for things like color blindness um, and usability. So WordPress iterates rapidly. We try to very quickly push out updates. One of the things that I think is, it is getting lost in our rapid changes to user interface and admin and static, we are losing track of standard compliance. It might be cool for us as like geeks and tech junkies to love seeing that admin, that now boring admin UI refreshed again, but it's actually very damaging to enterprises that don't want to suddenly have a new UI to train people on every three months or every six months. Um, it's very hard for governments that have to keep standards compliance work, that have very strict rules about how menus need to open up, and how you need to interact with menus. 
and to try to deal with try to try to deal with every six months we change the MUI, I'd like to go back and check whether they meet those standards. Um, something we need to do better. I'd like I'd like to see the core team. We have including our own employees. We have good people that work on UI and UX for WordPress. I would like to see some. And I know who wants to do this, but I would like to see some outgrowing in the core team. People just focus on making sure that we're adhering to standards. I would love to see a page on the WordPress Codex or on Make WordPress that lists out, here are the latest standards from all these different governments and W3C, here's how WordPress is meeting all these requirements. It would be hugely powerful for me to be able to send an enterprise, either when we're going in for a deal or when WordPress does an update and say, here are you know, those accessibility requirements you're worried about, here's the URL you go to, here's how the current version of WordPress is complying with all of them. You need to do better with standard compliance. Finally, just a thought on the community and how we do more, you know, how we get to the point where half the hands, you know, half the hands in this room get raised when asked about the $2,000 deals, or where we can picture WordPress running something like whitehouse.gov. We need to, we need to be more willing, I think, as a community to team up and work together. I know people love freelancing, and I always, I have friends that can't get past the idea that, um, that they can work by themselves and work independently. I can tell you for sure that the team players, people that in this community do take the time to find other developers, get over their phobias of working with other people, and team up and build, build little organizations, build agencies, work together, will grow a lot faster and go a lot farther than, organ than people that are just determined that they can't trust anybody but their own code. And I have at least two or three good friends that are, are remarkable developers, uh, remarkable WordPress developers, you know, who, who basically think nobody can do it better than they can. I'm telling you, if you're in this room, you're a developer, you're a freelancer, and you're telling yourself, nobody can do this better than I can, you're wrong, and you're arrogant. Um, I guarantee you, and there's no doubt in my mind that all of you have some special combination of skills that put together make you unique and make you very powerful to your customers. But I guarantee of those things you do, many of them, you can find somebody else to do them just as well, if not better. Don't be afraid to team up. Don't be afraid to work with other, work with other shops, other developers. That's the talk. Um, I kind of want to open up the floor for discussion, hear what people think, questions, thoughts on WordPress and enterprise. And we have at least a few people here that work in very large organizations. Yeah, people, I and mean, I think this goes back to, so I just repeat the question, you're saying that people are just circumventing it. They'll roll out like internet deployment, people still just keep emailing and sort of ignoring the tool. Um, I think that's indicative of, just off the top of my head, two things. The first thing it's indicative of is people not wanting to change, right? The second thing it's indicative of is needing to be more effective at working with the organization to help me to change, right? To introduce people to the tool to, as much as we might not like to say it as engineers, to help sell the tool to that team. I can tell you that some organizations are so culturally ingrained that it's not going to change. We deployed like calendars as internet that nobody stop, wants to stop using their main shared Apple calendar. Um, sometimes, you know, at the risk of sounding defeatist, sometimes I do think that there's just cultures and organization you have to think about beforehand. Um, and everybody else have any ideas and tips for circumventing the people's will against using internal enterprise tools? Get the CEO using it. Get the CEO using it? Good answer. Will that work? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, the leadership at some point does have to come from the top, right? If the CEO is using it to communicate, they're going to have to go there to communicate. Especially if you can get them commenting on what somebody else has posted. Like, so that it's clear not only that they're writing, but they're reading. That, that has the single fastest impact. Yeah. Wondering. Um, show WordPress against several of the other uh, large CMSs. Um, you know, if I were buying
buying the camera. And if I were marketing the camera, and I wanted you know, my camera to be thought of as professional great, I, I might do comparison charts and I might show my camera against Canon and uh, Nikon and the Castle Lab. If I'm just new camera from me, and I would show you know, you know, to compare it. Idealware does have some good resources. I don't know if I've ever seen like a side by side for enterprises, but they do have Idealware. I've been there a few times. They do have good like analyses of more non profit focused than I think. So uh, I run a business on you know, WordPress websites. Um, and I'm wondering how, uh, you know, when you ask the question, $50,000 deals, you know, when they, a couple people raise their hands, I'm really curious how you took your business from going after these smaller size deals into those enterprise deals? Was it you know, working with a larger, within a larger agency uh, that you were employed with and you had kind of a portfolio you built up? Or you know, how did you jump from the mom and pop shop, the smaller website, smaller deal, into the enterprise game? It's a good, it's a good question. And I think, to be honest with you, I actually, I don't think I can say it was this one thing that I did. Um, I think it was about it's about, you, you don't start on day one, Let's start with that preface, you don't start on day one, pick up WordPress and say, you know, unless you're, unless you're like the CEO of a huge enterprise and you get it, I tell you, I'm going to tomorrow start doing huge clients with WordPress. For me, I think the honest answer was, I did good work. I was invested in the platform, I built plugins, I tried to put things out there in the community, I tried to do good work with small, those kind of small deals. I talked about at the beginning, and I think you do that long enough and well enough consistently, Referrals, introductions. I can tell you that one of the most powerful things that I do is come to organizations like this where I network and where I build teams, where I find people that are looking to work together and build relationships with other developers. Um, and I think just through meeting other people, talking about challenges I'm facing, helping them solve problems, um, you know, I think that uh, I think that's that's really been the key. And I think I think in large part for us working with companies. Have the opportunity to work with companies through that networking, like Automatic and you know and other large agencies and hosting 
companies have been a huge part of getting to enterprise level deals, but I don't know that I have a good do this one thing. But I can tell you networking, taking those small clients seriously and building a reputation up from them, um, 